The age of the universe is one of the most fascinating questions that humanity has ever asked. Through a range of measurements and observations, scientists have determined that the universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old. This age estimate is closely related to the so-called Hubble constant, which measures the current expansion rate of the universe. A higher Hubble constant means the universe expands faster and is therefore younger, while a more slowly expanding universe is older. However, these methods produce different values for the Hubble constant, leading to the Hubble tension and the cosmological crisis. Well, so old timers, it's hard to call it a crisis. It is a crisis, but for old timers, it's really hard. I'm an old timer. I come from an era, an epoch, okay, where we didn't know the age or the size of the universe because they're related to within a factor of two. Is the universe 10 billion years old or is it 20 billion years old? And if you put all the data together, people sort of picked and chose and sifted and there was the 10 billion year camp and the 20 billion year camp and they were warring factions for many years. This is how you get this divide and it's on the frontier. And eventually with better telescopes, better data, which is how this is always solved. So with this factor of two warring factions, with new data, especially with the Hubble telescope, and the observations of the cosmic microwave background with three satellites that were engaged in this, one successively more precise than the next. So it turned out the uncertainty was no longer a factor of two, it narrowed. And of course, the actual answer ended up somewhere in between, all right? So we're now at about 14 billion years. No one is saying 10 or 20 anymore, all right? So you'd expect that. If the two warring factions, the right answer is probably somewhere in between, as it turned out to be. All right, so, we, so we're all happy, 14 billion year old universe, and then people start looking more carefully at it. They use this method and that method, and our observations are so precise. The Hubble constant version of the age of the universe is the Hubble constant 50 or is it 100? That gets you these two different ages of the universe. If the Hubble constant is 50, then the age of the universe is 20 billion years. If the Hubble constant is 100, then the age of the universe is 10 billion years. So, but point is, those two numbers, which used to have a huge uncertainty, no longer has a huge uncertainty, but now they each have their own camps because the uncertainty in each number excludes the other number. So if you put the uncertainties around those two numbers, the uncertainties don't overlap. Had those two numbers had uncertainties that overlapped, then it's just a matter of time, you get some better data. So that's a crisis in cosmology. One way scientists measure the Hubble constant is by studying the cosmic microwave background, CMB radiation, which is the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. Light doesn't travel particularly fast over cosmological distances, 186,000 miles a second. That means that as you look out to even nearby objects, let's say the closest object you can see with the naked eye, the Andromeda galaxy, if you look at that about two million light years away, it means you see it as it was two million years in the past. You look at more distant galaxies, 10 million light years away, 10 million years in the past, and so on. So you could ask the question, well, in that case, are there objects that are so distant that the light traveling from them began its journey close to the Big Bang itself? Is that possible? And the answer is yes. And that light was first detected in the 1960s. It's called the cosmic microwave background radiation. The CMB is believed to be nearly uniform in all directions, with small fluctuations that can be measured and used to determine the Hubble constant. There is also a different method astronomers use to measure relative distances in the universe. This is known as the cosmic distance ladder. It relies on using different types of objects as rungs on a ladder with each rung providing a way to measure distances to more distant objects. The first rung on the cosmic distance ladder is the measurement of distances to nearby stars using the technique of parallax. This involves measuring the apparent shift in the position of a star against the background of more distant stars as the Earth orbits the Sun. By measuring the angle of this shift, astronomers can calculate the distance to the star. The next rung on the cosmic distance ladder is the measurement of distances to nearby galaxies, using a type of variable star known as a Cepheid variable. Cepheids have well-known relationship between their intrinsic brightness and their period of variation, which allows astronomers to determine their distance based on their observed brightness. 
Further up the cosmic distance ladder are other types of variable stars, such as a supernovae, which can be used to measure distances to galaxies at even greater distance. By using these different rungs on the cosmic distance ladder, astronomers are able to measure distances to objects throughout the universe and build a more complete picture of its structure and evolution over time. Resolving this tension is one of the most pressing questions in modern cosmology and may require new and innovative approaches to measuring the universe's expansion. This discrepancy could be an indication that there is another ingredient in the universe that has not been observed yet. One promising candidate of this additional ingredient is known as early dark energy. The idea behind early dark energy is that the universe went through a phase early in its history where dark energy had a higher energy density than it does today. This would have affected the expansion rate of the universe, making it faster during that early period. As the universe expanded and cooled, the energy density of that early dark energy would have decreased and its effects on the expansion rate would have diminished. This could potentially solve the cosmological crisis and reconcile the different measurements of the Hubble constant, since the higher expansion rate during the early dark energy period would result in a higher value of the Hubble constant at that time, which would then decrease to the current measured value as the early dark energy density decreased. We're getting progressively better observational constraints. So, you know, different theories of what it might be predict different sorts of behavior for the evolution of the universe. And we've been measuring the evolution of the universe now. And the data appear to agree with the predictions of a constant density vacuum energy, a zero point energy. But one can't prove that that's what it is because one would have to show that the numbers, that the measured numbers agree with the predictions to an arbitrary number of decimal places. And of course, even if you've got eight, nine, 10, 12 decimal places, what if in the 13th one, the measurements significantly differ from the prediction? Then the dark energy isn't this vacuum state, ground state energy of the vacuum. And so then it could be some sort of a a field, some sort of a new energy, a little bit like electromagnetism, but very different from light, that fills space. And that type of energy could, in principle, change. It could become gravitationally attractive, for all we know. There is a historical precedent to that, and that is that the inflation with which the universe began, when the universe was just a tiny blink of an of an eye old, a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. You know, the universe went whoosh, it exponentially expanded. That dark energy-like substance, we call it the inflaton, that which inflated the universe, later decayed into more or less normal, gravitationally attractive matter. So the exponential early expansion of the universe did transition to a deceleration which then dominated the universe for about 9 billion years. And now this small amount of dark energy started causing an acceleration about 5 billion years ago. And whether that will continue or not is something that we'd like to answer, but I don't know that we will anytime soon. While early dark energy is a promising idea, it is still a relatively new and untested hypothesis. Researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics have now narrowed down the properties of this new type of energy, using a complementary statistical method known as the profile likelihood, which is common in particle physics but rarely used in cosmology. More research is needed to determine if early dark energy can fully resolve the Hubble tension. Additionally, early dark energy will have other effects on the structure and evolution of the universe, which would need to be carefully studied to ensure that they are consistent with other observations. While discrepancies between different measurements remain, potential solutions are being explored that could shed new light on the fundamental properties of the universe and its evolution over time. The James Webb Space Telescope will be instrumental in studying the properties of supernovae, the large-scale structure of the universe. By using the James Webb Space Telescope and other cutting-edge observational tools and theoretical models, cosmologists will continue to probe the mysteries of the universe and attempt to resolve the ongoing cosmological crisis. While there are still many unanswered questions and challenges ahead, the pursuit of knowledge and the quest to unravel the mysteries of the universe will undoubtedly lead to new discoveries and advancements in our understanding of the cosmos.